welcome the director, Jonas Metz. I should say, you are the first uh, audience in the U.S. to see this film. This is um, it's, uh, it's a U.S. premiere. Um, uh, Jonas, what got you into this film? You've made other films before. I think I asked you before that if you had any background as a soldier, ever been to war yourself, and you told me, no, that wasn't the case. This was your own first experience going to war. Yeah, I was, I was probably one of the most least likely people to go into a war zone. I say, um, you know, I'm, there's a draft in Denmark, and, uh, and I was um, not uh, uh, judged. Uh, what do you call it, like adequate material for, for military. <laughs> the Danish government did not want you. <laughs> exactly. So I don't have any military background, but obviously we did, we did some exercise with the soldiers before we, we got there as part of the research, as part of getting to know them and getting, the, getting them used to the camera. But I mean, the, the, the background for doing the film was uh, partly due to the political climate in Denmark that, that um, Three years ago, when this project was started, no one was really relating to the fact that that we were part uh, taking part in a very brutal conflict in Afghanistan. Um, it wasn't on the political agenda at all. Uh, it wasn't on the public agenda in terms of the fact that you know no one was <clears throat> relating to the fact that you know people were dying in Afghanistan. There was a big outcry in Denmark when the film came out, and I think primarily. Because of what I said before, that, that the Danes simply didn't realize what was going on in Afghanistan. So the film was a, a curtain fall. Um, and I think more than, than, than being you know, a shock to the political agenda, it was also because the film, I think, transcends um, the brutality and the trauma of, of, of um, of, of war in a very direct sense, and, and this sparked the debate. And, um, and then the, 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 the sort of case of, of the killings in the ditch, where there's questions of what, of what was going on, if what happened was an actual liquidation of these people, or, or whether it was a, a legitimate act of combat, um, you know, gave, obviously, you know, was like fuel on the fire uh, on, the, on the debate as such. We, did, we talked a lot about how to visually conceptualize Armadillo and how to distinguish it from, from news footage in a sense of telling the, the sort of mental story, the, 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 the psychological drama, the, the mythological backdrop to the whole sort of narrative of a you know, man at war or almost like a fall from grace sort of story. And, and we worked very much with different types of forms of representation, talking about you know the epic imagery of, of you know cameras and tripods and big landscapes and, and trying to you know have this kind of outpost representation, not just as a physical outpost but also as a mental outpost, and then the very sort of embedded uh, observational style shooting that we did on patrols, which was obviously, you know, you know, the only way we could do it, but also, I think, a good way of, you know, trying to position audiences in the boots of the soldiers. And then the third sort of representation is the, the helm cameras, um, which we brought with us partly to have enough footage, because war is, uh, as it shows quite chaotic and you can't always be in the place where things are happening. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we were covered as much as, as possible. But then working with this, or, or trying to explore this home camera material, I realized that you know, it's, it's more or less a direct mimicry of computer gaming. So I like the types of references that that type of material had to these kind of shoot 'em up uh, computer games and, and the type of you know, the, the suggestions to almost like uh, hyper-real uh, ways of perceiving reality that, that are at stake in a, in a war situation. The way that, that war has become mediated as well through, you know, 
you know, we've seen war already a thousand times in movies and in, and in news, and, and it's mediated even when the, we're there because the technology of modern warfare is computerized in a lot of ways. Well, I, I wanted to do a, a casting process before shooting the film, uh, and I tried to make it very clear to the military that, that it was important that people were in the film for the right reasons, and, and you know, not necessarily what the ones who really you know, want to be in something, do it for the right reasons. Um, so they, you know, they had, they asked out, I know, who wanted to be in the film, and I don't know how many volunteered, but they'd already picked the group for me when I arrived, uh, you know, at the army barracks for the first time. I don't know why they picked these guys. I presume, I have good presumptions that particularly the platoon commander, Rasmus, the guy with the beard, he was very much a hero in the military. He was like the one that they would put out there as you know, the perfect image of what a good soldier is supposed to be. And also Daniel, the guy with the tattoos, was, was regarded as a very good soldier. Um, but within that group there was also Mass. I mean, Mass was the perfect counter image to all of that, and, and Mass was in a lot of ways, a very open, a little, slightly naive, but also quite sort of idealistic and, and a little sort of in doubt about the whole thing. I thought that there, there was, you know, with these type of, um, let's call it modern democracy wars that the world has, you know, become involved in within the, you know, in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, and the increasingly militaristic approach that that the Western world has taken to to you know its sort of fringes, I think was mirrored very much in, in the relationship between Mass and Daniel. So so I saw that as a way of telling the bigger story or suggesting a bigger story on a very small scale in that drama between the characters. So I think when you're working with documentary and when you're working with documentary film, there's only you know, you can try and get as close to reality as you feel that your media uh, allows you. And, and a film is always composed of images, and images is representation, and representation is spoken from a perspective. So I'm at the end of the day, I, I'm the author of this film. Um, obviously, I think that my meeting with that situation was very real, and, and, and I I have tried through my poetic means of filmmaking to get as close to that reality as possible. But I think reality is an extremely complicated issue. I don't think it's just something objectively out there that we can point a camera to against and then and then that kind of transcends and transmits through the through the lens of the camera to an audience. I think there's more to it than that.